Hi, it's Larry here from Xbox Live's Major Nelson. I'm really excited about this next segment. Joining me is Leo Del Castillo. He is the GM of Xbox Hardware. Now, Leo, we're here in your cool secret lab, but we're going to talk about Project Scorpio, obviously, right? That's right. Now, your team builds the hardware. That's right. And I'm really excited because earlier this year, you met with Digital Foundry and a few other publications to release details, and you kind of talked about some of the components, but today, we're going to assemble them. That's right. So let's go. And we spent a lot of time talking about the Scorpio engine. The Scorpio engine, mm -hmm. right, is the, the piece of silicon, right? It is, a, it is an SOC, a system on the chip. Okay. It is the most powerful game console SOC made to date. And that's all right here. I mean, there's millions of transistors, right? There are 7 billion transistors. Wow. Okay. In this piece of silicon, 360 square millimeters okay. of, of silicon on this. Uh, there are 15,000 signals coming in and out, or connections for signals coming in and out of this mm -hmm. piece of silicon. So the piece of silicon actually has all the circuitry f in silicon, right? Mm -hmm. but, but we can't make a, part, uh, a device out of that just by itself. We have, sure. to, we have to break those signals out. We have to provide power and clocking. I think that is what I really want to show you is that you start with a piece of silicon that forms like the heart of your product. Okay. But the, really to make it a product takes a lot of other pieces to come together. Okay. So first off, we take that piece of silicon and first we have to mount on what we call a package. And that okay. package takes those 15,000 uh, signals, mm -hmm. interconnects, and breaks it out to something we can manage. So okay. that's 2,400 signals on the back of this package. Wow. Now this is the largest package we've ever used. It's a 50 by 50 millimeter package. Okay. And this, this then is the, the core component for the motherboard. Okay. Now, all by itself, it really can't do anything because it needs power. Or it sure. Clocks and needs, this, it, this is the brain. That's right. right? This and, is the brain. And much like me or you or anybody else, if you need the rest of the body to make it happen. Right. We need a body, we need a recirculatory system, we need all those things. Yep. So that's why I want to start walking you okay. through. Okay, so we're going to start with that. So the main thing is called the motherboard. Okay. So that's kind of the skeleton. That's the skeleton. <laughs> so we have we have the, the SOC, the Scorpio engine is sitting okay. here. Yep. Um, and around it we've organized uh, the, the main part of the memory. So okay. the memory subsystem is 12 gigabytes of memory. We, we realize that this is the most powerful console ever made. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to require uh, a fair bit of memory in order to make it, make it work. Um, the buses are incredible. I mean, you think about it. The signals that go from this chip to this chip travel mm -hmm. at the speed of light. Right. But they're switching so fast that in the time it takes a bit of information to get from one place to the other, mm -hmm. two other bits are already on their way. Right. And so there's three things on that same signal. I mean, signal. we're talking, we're not even talking milliseconds, we're talking b below oh, we're that. We're talking picoseconds. Yeah, yeah picos, picoseconds. Yeah. <laughs> Another key uh, thing that we have to do with the SOC is provide it power. Okay. So this SOC can, uh, can consume a lot of power mm -hmm. in order to do its, do its work. Um, we have 15 different voltage regulators that provide different voltages for different parts of the circuit. Sure. Um, one of the things that we do is uh, we actually specifically tailor the environment for each specific module. And that's, that's a new approach in your, in your discipline, is that correct? Yes, absolutely. What, what we found is we were trying to drive as much efficiency into the system as possible. One, because we want to use as little energy as possible. Sure. But two, it also minimizes the amount of heat we have to dissipate. Sure. And so if you, if you don't burn it, then you don't have to dissipate it. Right. And so driving that efficiency really helps us in those two regards. So if you, it's for instance, if you, if you only need a gallon of water, instead of walking up and going, well, I'll just take five gallons, you only take exactly what you need. That's right. And so one of the techniques that we've done, we call it the Hovis method. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that does is in, in traditional design methodologies, uh, you would know that each part required a certain voltage range mm -hmm. and you would target that voltage range. But, what we, but there, what's built into that is a lot, of, a lot of unknowns around what it's going to look like in the system. Sure. So what we do is once it's in the system, we then tailor it to exactly So you measure it and say, okay, this is what you said you need, but what do you really need? That's right. And wow. we measure it, and that actually gets us uh, additional margin that we can then right. uh, see in efficiencies. And that's one thing I want to point out is that, you know, people look at something like this and like, oh, I've put together a PC before. This is similar to that. And sure, maybe the components are simple, but those are generic off-the-shelf parts. You have customized every part of this for efficiency for performance for, for, for the console, correct? Right, exactly. Do exactly what it needs and to, to, to basically be reliable. And ring out as much power as possible while not wasting any energy. That's right. So let's start building up the chassis. All right. So we use a, a, a two-piece steel chassis. Okay. Uh, and it, this is, I'm showing here the motherboard. Which um, we just saw. Which we just saw. So we just didn't hear. And added to it is the heat sink. And I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Um, but this, this this metal pan here is um, half of the metal chassis. Yeah. Now, we use a, a fairly traditional approach that we started using a few designs back. Uh, these are drawn out of, out of solid sheets of, of, of steel. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a one-piece 
uh, drawn design with no seams. So, so if you flip it over, what, this entire tray is one piece of metal right. that you you create. This, this started as a flat piece of metal, and every console gets one created for it. That's right, and we and we form it in a series of, of punches mm -hmm. um, to so that we have a piece that has very precise uh, edges for sealing and has no seams. One of the things that we want to do with this chassis is we want to provide a backbone for the design for mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, but it has to provide a lot of other things. For instance, it has to shield mm -hmm. uh, electromagnetic inter interference. Because there's again, there's a lot of electricity in That's here right. and there's bits and, and atoms floating around and everything's happening and you need to keep that all inside. That's right, there's a lot of energy going on inside of here that if we were to let it go out, it would jam your radios on all your wireless right. stuff. And you know, so, so that has to be contained. It's gotta behave. It's gotta behave. We also have to uh, you know, provide shielding for the radios, for the radios right. need to actually have to be working as well. So, yeah, so it's interesting, a problem you have is like, okay, we have all of the energy in here which can cause interference, but yeah, we need wireless and we need our controllers to be able to talk to the controllers. So you actually, have, I noticed, you mount that outside, That's right. outside, the, outside the container so it's isolated. That's right. And we, we're actually able to utilize the same level of technology that we'd already use in Xbox One S okay. for our Wi-Fi and our accessories radio right. protocols. And so we have two separate radio modules, one for the Wi-Fi, one for the w Xbox wireless accessories. Mm -hmm. so I want to talk a little bit about the hard drive. Yeah. So one of the things about uh, 4K gaming that we realize is that 4K games are going to require a lot more data. Yes, they are. Yeah, higher, higher resolution textures, more of them. Uh, and so to, in order to keep the game loads and game install times reasonable, mm -hmm. we knew we needed more performance out okay. of the hard drive. And so, uh, so, so we end up, so we start off with first, we have to have the right component. Mm -hmm. But then we can't just throw that component into the system mm -hmm. uh, because you know, how the performance behaves in the system can be influenced by a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, for hard drives particularly, Vibration. Vibration sure. is the enemy of performance for hard drives. Yep. And so, uh, if you look at our, if you look at the chassis, the mounting system that we use for the hard drive, uh, we have these little rubber dampers yep. that isolate the hard drive itself from the mechanical from, chassis. Sure. And so, so that provides isolation from any anything that might be vibrating, whether it's in the chassis or outside of the chassis. Right. Another thing that we do, if you look at the way we do these wires, you're here, actually wiring it in. Here. I'm actually wiring it in. <laughs> And you look at the cable system and you yep. say, you know, here's this plastic cover right here that says right. hard drive on it. Right. It's not there just to tell you it's a hard drive cable. Right. But actually, the reason for that, for that assembly is to keep the cable itself from touching anything else on the chassis. Right. Because vibrations could be coming through that cable to sure. the hard drive itself. Right. And so that's the kind of, of care that we take so we know that when this thing goes all together, that yeah. it's going to perform in the way that we want it to perform. Right. So now. Uh, talk a little bit about the heat sink. Yeah, this is this is this little guy right here, yeah, big guy this, right here. This this not s too small thing that we added to yeah. the motherboard, right? As I told you, this is a very high power processor, mm -hmm. Scorpio engine. Matter of fact, it has the highest heat density of any uh, SOC that we've used in previous designs. Mm -hmm. So this really taxed the, the thermal system design. We had to basically go to a different level of technology. Um, this is what we went to is we, we use a technology called a vapor chamber. Okay. So vapor chambers are not new, but they've been used in things like uh, servers, sure. high-end systems. But this is the first time we believe that's ever been used in a consumer level product. Okay. Uh, and we're using this technology because that's what it takes to, to deliver this kind of performance in a consumer level. So product. one of the challenges you have here, we talked about all the energy in here and energy equals heat and so on and so forth. But underneath here is where, is where the chip is and that's the right. chip is doing all the heavy lifting, it's doing the thinking and it's it's making heat, you gotta get rid of that heat. That's right, that's a very important. As a matter of fact, it's not just the, the Scorpio engine, but the memory system itself right. as well, so it makes right. heat. And so what we do, uh, this vapor chamber is actually a copper base. Mm -hmm. It is, it's, it's hollow inside, but it's filled with deionized water. Okay. And then we pull a vacuum on that chamber. So that lowers the boiling point for the water. So now as the water heats up from those electrical components dissipating heat, mm -hmm. that turns into steam inside, okay. inside of the assembly. Right. And that steam then migrates out and transfers the heat to the base. Of the so you guys take care of all, it's not like I have to go, oh, I gotta add water to my radiator. It's all, it's all an a, enclosed system. Exactly, this is all engineered to, to last the, the life of the product. Right. right? That's our goal is to, have, to basically give you a product that you don't have to worry about. You press right. power and you start playing games. That's amazing. Now. In order to get that heat then out of the system, mm -hmm. we have to motivate that air. Okay. So we have a fan. We have a fan, but yeah. it's not just a fan, it's a it's a, a, a ducted centrifugal fan. So <laughs> so we start with modeling the system as a system as early as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. and seeing where the air is gonna flow, and we can start working on these designs. So if you look at the ducts and the shrouds and the impellers, so we start with, with the with the computational fluid dynamics 
analysis, and then we start building models. Okay. And then those models, we start refining them, and we start measuring and see how they work. Um, and then that finally iterates to the final design that we end up using. So now you snap this in there. here, and the, the, the goal is, is that it's going to move air across the vapor chamber, and the warm air uh, is going to exhaust out here. Right. So we're drawing air through the sides, mm -hmm. through the centrifugal fan, then blows it out the back and exhausts the hot air out the back Great. of the chassis. So the next part that we're going to talk about is the source of all that power that we're dissipating. Yeah. So obviously we're pulling that power from the wall. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did with Xbox One S is we went to an internal power supply, which mm -hmm. our customers told us that they loved. Yes, and, they're uh, delighted. We agreed. <laughs> and so we made sure that we kept that going in future designs. But, but to be clear, it, we, everybody loves it, but it also it, the reason it, it's difficult is because now you're taking something that was outside that may have created power and, or energy, and, which is heat, and you moved it inside. That's right. So that's that's a challenge. You just made the you just made the challenge a little harder. Yeah. So not only did we have add another piece that we needed to put inside the box, but mm -hmm. another part that generates heat, as you said, and impedes airflow. Mm -hmm. So it does all these things. But how did we react to that? Well, the first thing that we did is we actually built the most efficient power supply we ever made. Okay. Uh, this is this is a this level of efficiency we were able to build into this system is much higher because we don't actually don't have the extra cabling yep. of, the, of the external power supply. Um, and we have you know shorter connections, and so uh, we put all that thought and energy into this, and it drives the overall efficiency of the system mm -hmm. even further. Yep. And one of the things that that we see here is that we actually take some of the air that comes out of the duct is routed through the power supply itself. So, so hey, you're on your way. Go, go cool off the go cool off the power supply water. That's right. So it's multi-use. <laughs> right. So we well, see it just that, snaps right in there. That snaps right in there. <laughs> and so now so let's go to the uh, optical drive. Yep. So Xbox One S today is the only game console that uh, is capable of ultra high def uh, Blu-ray playback. 4K HDR. Until Scorpio. Beautiful. Scorpio will now be the second. Yep. <laughs> uh, we just dropped that part so that right goes in there. there. So we're able to, to utilize that technology. So you kind of see it coming forward. together in front of your eyes right here. That's right. We're starting to fill up that space. And you can see there's not a lot of extra space No, there's not. Over. I mean, it is, it is packed in there. That's right. Now let's cap it off. So here's the other half of that chassis. Ah. I want to spend a little bit of time because in this part you can see it a little bit more closely. Yeah, look at that. One would say that you know forming metal is something that we've been doing for centuries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I would say you know punching metal and drawing forms like this in steel punches probably you know probably dates back to the Industrial Revolution. Sure. But we found places to innovate here as well. One of the things that the chassis needs to do is uh, shield from EMI. So that means you want your holes to be small. Electromagnetic interference. That's right, electromagnetic interference. Okay. So that means you, and these frequencies that we generate with these high performance parts are very high, and so the holes need to be as small as possible. Okay. Um, and then, but at the same time, we're trying to move a lot of air through the system to be able to cool it. Yeah. So we want the holes as big as possible. Right. So those two things conflict with each other. So one of the areas where that really came uh, really into conflict was in the exhaust area. Okay. So we look at this area of the, of the fan. This is where all of the air from that ducted fan has to blow out. It's got to go out. We want to we want to maximize the amount of open area there, but mm -hmm. we want to keep the hole small enough to be able to shield the system. Okay. One of the ways that we did that is we wanted to punch the holes very, very close together. Okay. We decided, in fact, to punch them so close together that the material between the holes okay. is thinner than the thickness of the material. So let me just say, so the, the, that little space you see in between the holes is, is thinner than... That's right. Wow. If, if you looked at it, it looks yeah. like a knife edge this way. Wow. And if you, you know, basically all of the tooling engineers and mechanical engineers that we talked to before we did this mm -hmm. said that we shouldn't even try to do this. Yeah. It was that hard. But you guys did it. But we, we worked at it. Yeah. We have some, some fantastic tooling engineers, and they love a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have punched holes. These are punched holes, not laser cut holes. Right. If you laser cut these, it would be easy. Sure. But you can't do that in production very easily. Sure. But we actually punch these holes mechanically, and they are perfectly flat and aligned. So that will go right on top. Of notice how, again, notice how there's just not a lot of space in there. And every single, every single millimeter is optimized, and you, you, the engineers have to go through here and figure out where to put things, how to put things, how they sit next to each other, how much energy they're creating, any interference. No, you can't. This is this is extraordinary. You're ne you're never going to look at a piece of electronics the same way ever again. That's right. <laughs> so now I'll turn it a little bit, and we'll start. And we can now see that this is actually the completed yeah. structure. Yep. Um, and that's that's the rear. So the ports rear. back and there. You see, I actually have it. I have it right now. I have it upside down yep. for a reason because I'm now going to start snapping on the, the, the plastic parts that you actually see. Yep. So the first step is to put it in the bottom, mm -hmm. snap it in place, and I will just flip it over here. 
and we have our top. Kind of goes down there. And there you have it. Slides in. So this is this is this is it. This is what people will see. This is what people will see. Well, this is Leo. I really appreciate you walking us through. And this is the first look at Scorpio and what it looks like inside and how great it looks outside. And hopefully you'll appreciate a little bit of what Leo and his team have gone through, which has been an extraordinary effort to create the most powerful gaming console ever. Leo, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching.